get into the worst purchases, I wanted to speak to an item that could go either way. I could put it on the best or I could put it on the worst list. It really just kind of depends on my mood. because this piece, it is fabulous. I absolutely love this bag, but when I think about the experience in purchasing it, it probably was one of my least enjoyable experiences this entire year, and it kickstarted a very long losing streak. And so because of that, it could kind of end up on either list. You can be the judge, but I definitely wanted to give this bag honorable mention in this video, the Fendi Baguette in purple sequins. This piece, again, it is just sheer fabulousness. I love this bag. The shade of purple is, again, it's purple perfection. Now, just comparing the two different shades of purple, I have my card holder here from Dior and kind of putting it up against this Fendi, you can definitely tell very different shades of purple, but just fabulous shades nonetheless. Now, again, I love the shade of purple. I love the style of this bag. So I am very, very quickly becoming a huge fan of the Fendi Baguette in the normal kind of regular, regular size. I really like this size. Moving on now to why this bag potentially could have made the worst purchases list. And it really doesn't have anything to do with this bag in particular, it's actually one that I got before this bag. So I originally pre-ordered this bag back in June. I received it a couple months later. So this was early to mid August. And wouldn't you know, there were two sections that were missing sequins. Yeah, somehow that got by somebody at Fendi or their qual quality control. And because of that, it just kind of put a really sour taste in my mouth when it came to the sequin pieces. And I was really kind of going back and forth as to whether or not I wanted to be done with the sequins, but I just felt that I needed this piece. There's just, there's something with this, the tie to Sex in the City. I'm a huge Sex in the City person or fan. I absolutely love both the original series and the reboot, but because of that, this, this is definitely my Carrie Bradshaw bag. And I just love this. So aside from, you know, that quality issue and the long losing streak that it kind of kickstarted, I love this bag. I love the purple on this. I think it's very timely for football season. And yes, this is definitely a head turner. I have worn this a couple times. This is not an everyday bag, but the couple times I have worn this, literally almost everyone <laughs> turns around and looks at it because of the way that it just ricochets the light off of it. It sparkles. It's amazing amazing. This is just a piece that I am so happy to have in my collection. But enough of that, onto the worst purchases list. And it's important for me to note that of all the items I'm about to mention, I only have one of them still in my possession. And I'm actively trying to sell that one item as we speak. Out of all of these items, the vast majority of them were quality issues. And luckily for me, I was still within the return window and was able to send them back to these manufacturers because of the various quality issues. First and foremost, probably the most annoying piece that was definitely kind of topping my list of worst purchases this year was the Fendi Nano Baguette Charm in purple sequins. So obviously kind of keeping the purple theme going, the sequin theme going, this piece, again, I was like, yes, I found a purple piece. I was so excited about it when I initially purchased it. And especially in that size and in the sequins, and you know, I thought it was a limited piece and I had just found a diamond in the rough, well, I, I definitely found something that was a little rough because I think this piece has made the rounds and Fendi has, for whatever reason, kept it in circulation amongst a bunch of different boutiques when they should have pulled it off the floor. This piece, and again, I take partial blame on this because I was just so blinded by those little purple sequins that I did not check this piece thoroughly when I was in the boutique because if I had, I would never have purchased this. There were so many quality issues with the sequin being bent, cracked, having, you know, like little stains on them or like gunk or sticky stuff on them. There were beads that were missing. There were so many things wrong with this piece. After I got it home and I was really taking a look at it, I'm like, I don't wanna keep this. Well, maybe I wanna repair it. So I contacted Fendi and tried to inquire what it would take to actually get this repaired and they just sent me through the ringer. I was ignored. I was just like kind of strung along there for a bit by the boutique that I purchased it from. But it also took me some time to actually dispute the charge with my credit card company before Fendi finally gave me my refund. So there were just a lot of things going on with that purchase that definitely put a very sour taste in my mouth when it came to Fendi. 
when it came to luxury purchases, just all the things, and especially purchasing in a boutique because of kind of all these pieces that I've had quality issues with, that was the only piece I ever purchased in a boutique and had that kind of situation. All the other ones I purchased through the website and the returns were super, super easy. So it just really kind of put, a, again, a sour taste in my mouth with the brand, with luxury, but also purchasing in a boutique, which is supposed to be the opposite when you purchase in a boutique. So that one definitely tops the list for the worst purchase of the year. This next piece is the last purple item, I promise, but it is non-sequined. This is the Micro Lady D-Joy from Dior. At the time, again, purple perfection. I thought I had found the bag. I was so excited to have something in this purple color. I ordered it, it arrived, and I was just so elated, but ultimately two things. So the first one was, it's a micro bag. Okay, it's a micro bag. I thought after watching some videos on YouTube that I can make it work. I know it's gonna be small, but I can make it work. That was a really small bag. Yes, I could fit my stuff into it, but easily getting things in and out was going to be a nightmare. And I just, I had that realization actually kind of, you know, having the bag in my hand, playing around with it, I, I came to that realization that this bag is really not going to fit my lifestyle. It's not going to be an easy bag for me. So that was the first thing. The second thing was a quality issue. So as I was, you know, taking my items out, I noticed that the interior of the bag had been damaged. There was this section that looked like it had been cut out of the suede lining. My heart sank. I was so upset. I contacted Dior and I said, you know, it's in the very bottom corner of this bag. I don't really know what to do with this. I mean, you know, are you guys able to fix this or, you know, repair it? And ultimately they weren't able to repair it. They were going to offer to swap it with another one, but because that item was in such limited production, there actually wasn't another one to replace it with. And so ultimately because of that, they offered to refund my money. So I just went ahead and took the refund on it. But yeah, it was definitely kind of a heartbreaker that one because I was so excited for that piece. But then ultimately, ultimately because of the quality issue on the interior lining. Yeah, yeah that bag was a no-go for me. And now on to the three quality issues that I endured with various Celine pieces. Two of them were the same style and then the third was another style. So starting off with the two pieces first, this was in the Mini Triumph I purchased originally from 24S in the Carmen color. I was so excited to finally, you know, potentially get something in this Carmen color. I ordered the Mini Triumph, super excited about a little mini bag, especially after the Nano Baguette debacle, received it and there was a horrible odor to it. Let it air out, quite literally outside for a couple days, still had a horrible odor. I contacted 24S for us and they offered to replace it. Great, fantastic. So I sent them the old one, the old stinky one back. They sent me a new one that got lost in transit. And then they sent me another one and that one too had an odor. And so definitely had a bad experience from 24S and purchasing those too many triumphs because of the odor. But then in the midst of all of that, Celine actually released the teen triumph bag in the Carmen color here in the States. So I ordered that one from Celine.com and when it arrived. I was super excited. I remember unboxing it, taking it out of the packaging, and I buckled the strap, put it on my shoulder, and it made the worst noise. Like this noise. I think I even called it like a baby pterodactyl. It was just this screeching, high-pitched noise. It was horrible. Ultimately, the strap on the side of the bag was too tightly wound around the D-ring on the side. So every time it was just creating this horrible friction and this horrible noise as a result. And so because of that, it had to go back. So when it comes to Celine, I would love to say that I am a proud owner of the Carmen color. However, three strikes, it was out. Definitely made kind of the worst purchases of the year based on those horrible experiences. Enough of those quality issues. Moving on to the last of my worst purchases for 2023, and that would be the Lueve Wool and Mohair Scarf in Gray. Now, this is an item that, you know, of course, it's a scarf. You're gonna wear it in the colder months, you know, to stay all snuggly, you know, toasty and warm. Now, yes, it is wool, it is mohair, I get it. However, it wasn't until I actually owned this and wore it a couple times that I realized how itchy this piece is. I just, yes, it's wool, but I have a lot of other wool pieces that are not itchy. I think it's the mohair, at least that, that's my assumption that just me and mohair do not mix. I do have a mohair sweater. It is not this itchy. 
So I don't know, there's something about this. We're just not meant to be. But also this sheds like you would not believe. And I remember mentioning this in my unboxing of this scarf. And I just, with all the black that I wear, these little gray things, I, I can't deal with that. I just, I can't do it. So because of that, or because of those two reasons, I am actively looking to sell this. I'm currently looking at my different options available to me with this scarf, but this is just one of those things that I did not realize that this was not the type of piece for me until I owned it, I wore it. Now I know that wool and mohair, not a thing for me moving forward. So you live and you learn. There you have it, my best and worst luxury purchases of 2023. But what about you? What were some of your best and worst? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you're into this type of content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah.